Good morning. Today's class is on international health agencies. Learning outcomes. At the end of the lecture, students should be able to list the major health agencies around the world that play important roles in promoting health. Describe the functions and responsibility of various health agencies and organizations. Share the contents uh, under three headings likely to be like international agencies, other United Nations agencies and health work of bilateral agencies. Bilateral means one country is helping another country. For example, Switzerland is helping Malaysia. So bilateral between the countries. And non-governmental and other agencies like NGOs, non-governmental organizations. Then voluntary health agencies. Actually, NGOs are included under voluntary agencies. Coming to the point like why you want agencies, why you want to know about the agencies. For example, during our pandemic of COVID-19, our country was facing problem. For example, Malaysia is facing problem of COVID and uh, at certain point we don't have any medications for the COVID. So some other country should help Malaysia uh, so that our disease can be reduced. So in that case, there should be an agreement between countries. That agreement can be made by international agencies, for example, World Health Organization. So it will help other countries to get proper medical aid. So we need international health agencies. So nothing on earth is more international than disease. I think you will agree with this statement. Health and disease have no political geographical boundaries. Yes, disease in any part of the world is constant threat to the other parts. Definitely because the pandemic of COVID-19 started in Wuhan and it's progressed to all over the world. So disease is any part of the world is constant threat to other parts. History is replete with examples of spread of pestilence, particularly of plague, cholera, along trade routes. In order to protect against the spread of this kind of disease from one country to another country, it should be quarantined. That's what we are doing now. Quarantine failed in its objective because of the lack of scientific knowledge regarding the causation and mode of spread of disease. It became necessary for international agreement and cooperation on quarantine matters to control communicable diseases. International conferences were held and organizations set up for discussion, agreement and cooperation on matters of international health. The first such international sanitary conference which was held in 1851. The origin of international health cooperation dates back to 1851 when an international sanitary conference, the first of its kind, was convinced in Paris. The conference was attended mainly by European countries like Austria, France, Great Britain, Greece, Portugal, Russia and four sovereign states. I think these are the countries who are suffering more because of COVID in the present situation. The objectives of this conference was very limited, that is to introduce some order and uniformity into quarantine measures which are varied from country to country. So there was no uniform rule in quarantine. So this conference established an uniform rule for the quarantine. Like in those days there will be trade routes like this route only there has to go to trade. So there was no uniform quarantine method. So these countries, so-called developed countries at the present time, were agreed for quarantine agreements in this conference. Pan-American Sanitary Bureau. The next important milestone in international health work was the establishment of Pan-American Sanitary Bureau in 1902 in the America. It was primarily intended to coordinate quarantine procedures in American states. In 1924, an important document was signed by American Republic, namely the Pan-American Sanitary Code, which is still in force between the states. In 1947, the Bureau was recognized and organization was called the Pan-American Sanitary Organization. The Pan-American Sanitary Bureau was the world's, world's first international health agencies. So we may ask which is the first international health agencies. So don't confuse with the World Health Organization. The first was Pan American Sanitary Bureau. Coming to the World Health Organization, this is uh, one of the major international agencies. 
The World Health Organization is specialized non-political health agencies of the United Nations with headquarters at Geneva. Coming to the objectives of World Health Organization in the abbreviated form WHO, the current objective of the WHO is the attainment by all people of the world a level of health that will permit them to lead a socially, economically productive life. Two major policy development have influenced the WHO. First, the Almaita uh, conference in 1978 and primary health care, which provided both WHO and UNICEF with a common character for health. Secondly, the global strategy for the health for all by 2000 and more recently Millennium Development Goals and also the present like Millennium Development was uh, about to finish by 2000. Now the present is Sustainable Developmental Goals. I think uh, in your previous class in Environment and Health, we have discussed on e-portal about uh, sustainable developmental goals come to membership how the countries can get the membership in world health organization the membership is open to all the countries member of who and un members contribute to yearly budget entitled entitled to service and aids in 1948 56 members were there in 1996 190 members regional director is the technical and administrative head Decentralization is very much needed and it is decentralized to six regional organizations like regional country and regional office. Coming to the regions like in Southeast Asia, the headquarters is in New Delhi. In Africa, it's in Congo. In America, it's in Washington. Then in Europe, it's in Denmark. Eastern Mediterranean, it's in Cairo. Then Western Pacific, it is in Manila, that is Philippine. Coming to the members, Head of is Director General, one Deputy Director and five Assistant Director. There will be 4,500 staff members, that is 30% in the Regional Office and 30% in the Headquarters, that is in Geneva. Then 40% work in individual countries. Come to staff pattern. See, staff like medical and public health specialties, nursing and pharmacy, dentistry, veterinary, sanitary engineering biology chemistry so most of the areas have covered here so who consists of almost all the area that area should be related to the health or public health or animal health coming to the structure of who the world health assembly is the first then the second is the executive board then third is the secretariat the purpose of who help government strengthening their health services, promote better teaching standards, inform, advise and help in the field of health, cooperation with other agencies for improvement of nutrition, housing, sanitation, recreation, economic and other aspects of environmental hygiene. Cooperation among scientific and professional group, Promote maternal and child health welfare and foster ability to live harmoniously in changing environment. Foster activities in the field of mental health. This is very important in the present scenario. The purpose conducts the research in field of health, stimulate eradication of epidemics, endemic and other diseases, propose international conventions and agreements in the health matters, develop international standards for food, biological and pharmaceutical products, developing informed public opinion, cooperation with other agencies, advisory services, aiding professional and technical education by providing fellowships, exchange scientific information and distributing aids. Publications of WHO like books and journals on public health, technical publications, publishes PHC material and manual policy papers and articles, handbooks on basic documentation, resolution of decisions, monthly chronicles, bulletin like scientific articles supported by WHO, monographs and WHO technical report series, public health papers, international digest of health legislations. Work of WHO. There are many works. Here I am going to highlight only eight 
The first is prevention and control of specified diseases, development of comprehensive health services, family health, environmental health, health statistics, biomedical research, health literature and information, cooperation with other organizations. World Health Days of Importance, for example, in the 30th of January, which is Anti-Leprosy Day, 7th April, World Health Day, 22nd April, World Habitat Day, 31st May, No Tobacco Day, 1st July, Doctor's Day, like that, till the December of each year, like 11th December is UNICEF Day. These are some of the days we have to celebrate according to WHO guidelines. Other United Nations agencies like UNICEF, the expanded form of UNICEF is United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, which was established in 1946. It works in close collaboration with WHO, FAO and UNESCO. The expansion form will be in the next slides. It's covered in the fields as the maternal and child health, nutrition, then environmental sanitation. Especially the provision of water supply to rural communities, health centers and health education and programs which benefit child health. Come to the contents of services, child health, child nutrition, family and child welfare, education which includes formal and non-formal. Come to child health, UNICEF has provided substantial aid for the production of vaccines and sera in many countries, environmental sanitation program and pure water supply. The purpose is not only to reduce child illness and death, but to improve the quality of life in the villages of the member countries. Coming to child nutrition, high priority to improving the child nutrition in collaboration with FAO, Food Agriculture Organization. Then UNICEF also began aiding applied nutrition program through such channels as a community development, agricultural extension, schools and help the rural population to grow and eat the food which are required for better child nutrition. Intervention against nutritional deficiency diseases. Provision of vitamin A in areas where xeropthalmia is pre prevalent. Uh, I am not sure about the Malaysia but in India uh, there is a program called vitamin A program. Like each month uh, the midwife like uh, the people who are in the primary health center will visit the school and they will deliver vitamin A supplements to the children. So that was the national program which is running in India. Then iodine in areas of endemic goiter, provisions of iron and folate supplements to combat anemias because most of the uh, pubertal girls will have anemic problem and uh, the lady who is pregnant they are facing anemic problems so for them government is providing free iron tablets in many countries so these are the functions of UNICEF so family and child welfare the purpose is to improve the care of children both within and outside their homes then parental education then through youth agencies and women's club women's club education and formal and non-formal in collaboration with UNESCO, UNICEF is assisting India and other countries to improve of teaching science in India as well as in Malaysia. Like science laboratories, establishment of science laboratories, then workshops, tools, library books, then audiovisual aids for being made available to education institutions. Then currently UNICEF is promoting a campaign known as GOBI. The G stands for growth charts to better monitor the child development. Then O stands for oral rehydration to treat all mild and moderate dehydrations. Then B stands for breastfeeding. Then I stands for immunization. Coming to the next agency, which is International Red Cross. Don't confuse with the Red Crescent. Maybe the functions are same, but still International Red Cross is different. The Red Cross is non-political, non-official international humanitarian organization. It was funded, founded by Henry Dunant, a Swiss businessman, after seeing a result of Battle of Solferino. The Red Cross was born in 1863. 
its emblem was red cross and a white background the seven fundamental principles of red cross and red crescents first is humanity impartiality neutrality independence voluntary services unity and universality coming to humanity its a purpose is to protect human life and health and to ensure respect for the human being then impartiality it makes no discrimination as to nationality race religious belief class or political opinions neutrality the movement may not take sides in hostilities or engage at any time in controversies of political racial religious or ideological nature that means this agency should stand in neutral place for example if there is a war between uh south korea and north korea the red cross should help both the countries both south korea and north korea and it should not support only one country that's what this means and independence it must always maintain their autonomy so that they may be able at all times to act in accordance with the principles of the movement then voluntary services it is a voluntary relief movement not prompted in any manner or by desire for gain that means red cross won't gain any profit by delivering the services unity there can be only one red cross or one red crescent society in any one country it must be open to all universality the international red cross and red crescent movement is worldwide in which all societies have equal status and share equal responsibilities and duties in helping each other united nation development program which is abbreviated as undp it was established in 1966 it is the main source of funds for technical assistance i am again repeating it is the main source of funds for technical assistance the basic objective of the undp is to help poorer nations develop their human and natural resources more fully the undp projects cover virtually every economic and social sector agriculture industry education and science health and social welfare coming to fao that means food and agricultural organization it was formed in 1945 with headquarters in rome rome is in italy it was the first united nations organization specialized agency created to look after several areas of world cooperation the chief aim of the fao are the first is to help the nation raising living standards to improve nutrition of uh, people of all countries to increase the efficiency of farming forestry and fisheries to better condition of rural people and through all this means to widen the opportunity of all peoples for productive work the most important aspects of fao work is towards ensuring that the food is consumed by the people who need it in sufficient quantities and in right proportion to develop and maintain a better state of nutrition throughout the world in this context the fao has organized a world freedom from hunger campaign in 1960 the main objective of the campaign is to combat malnutrition and to disseminate information and education the fao is also collaborating with other international agencies in the applied nutrition programs the joint program between who and fao expert committee have provided the basis for many cooperative activities like nutrition survey training courses seminars and the coordination of research programs in brazilosis and other zoonoses international labor organization which is abbreviated as ilo in 1919 the international labor organization was established as an affiliate of league of nation to improve the working and living condition 
if the working population all over the world. The purpose of the ILO are to contribute to the establishment of lasting peace by promoting social justice, to improve through international action, labor conditions and living standards, to promote economic and social stability. The International Labor Code is a collection of international minimal, minimum standards related to health, welfare, living and working condition of workers all over the world. The ILO is provides assistance to organizations interested in betterment of living employment standards. There is a close collaboration between ILO and WHO in the field of health and labor. The headquarters of ILO is in Geneva. Come to the World Bank. The purpose to help underdeveloped countries to raise living standards and their people functions gives loan for projects on economic growth concern with electric electricity transport water supply sanitation agriculture health family welfare and population control health work of bilateral agencies bilateral means between the countries are two countries which mutual which works on the mutual understanding the, the first is colombo plan the colombo plan is a regional organization that embodies the concept of collective intergovernmental effort to strengthen economic and social development of member countries in the asia specific region the primary focus of all colombo plan activities is on human resource development framework for bilateral arrangements involving foreign aid and technical assistance for economic and social development of the region. Down to the objective to promote the economic and social development of Asia and the specific to promote technical cooperation, to facilitate the transfer and sharing of developmental experiences among members countries within the region with emphasis and concept of South cooperation. Malaysian Australian Alumni Counseling MEAAC launched in 2001 with the first batch of scholarship awarded in 2002. The aim of the Malaysian Australia Colombo Plan commemoration scholarship is to provide Malaysian and Australian students the opportunity to experience diverse cultures through sponsored education. Coming to the next one, the United States Agency for International Development, that is USAID. Heavy rainfall beginning in the mid-December 2014 triggered floods that result in at least 17 deaths and displaced more than 2,30,000 or 230,000 people in northern and eastern peninsula Malaysia, particularly in Kelantan, Pahang and Tranganu. USAID's Office of U.S. Foreign Disaster Assistance supported pa partners to procure and distribute emergency and relief supplies and implement water, sanitation and hygiene interventions in flood affected communities. USAID and OFDA also airlifted around 1000 rolls of plastic sheeting from its relief supply warehouse in Dubai and transported tents provided by Qatar charity from Dubai to Malaysia to provide emergency shelter assistance. Come to Swedish International Development Agency, SIDA. SIDA supports for regional efforts like mutual interaction between the human rights, democracy, equality, the environment and climate, then support for research cooperation. Coming to DANIDA, Danish International Development Agencies. The Danish International Development Agency is the official development cooperation agency of the government of Denmark under the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Danish development policy focuses upon eradication of poverty and ensuring sustainable development. It works in selected countries referred to as a program countries and provide 
support to NGOs as well as governmental agencies. Come to the roles of Danida. The first is ensure a safe and healthy environment for the benefit of present and future generation. Conserve the country's unique natural resources and diverse culture heritage. Promote lifestyles and pattern of consumption and production consistent with the principles of sustainable development. Both the Danish and Malaysian governments have cooperated and agreed to Environmental Cooperation Program that is ECP. One of the five areas involved in the current phases of Malaysia Danish International Development Assistance cooperation is solid waste management funded by Danish government was established to provide support and assistance on federalization of solid waste management to the Department of National Solid Waste Management under the Ministry of Housing and Local Government. Come to non-governmental and other agencies. The first is Rockefeller Foundation. Rockefeller Foundation is a philanthropic organization chartered in 1913 and endowed by Mr. John D. Rockefeller. Its purpose is to promote the well-being of mankind throughout the world. In its early years, the foundation was active chiefly in public health and in medical education. Subsequently, its interest was expanded to include the advancement of life sciences, social sciences, the humanities and agricultural sciences. The International Council on Management of Population programs received the most grants by Rockefeller Foundation. Come to the Ford Foundation. Malaysian AIDS Council received a grant from the Ford Foundation and it is sister organization. The Malaysian AIDS Foundation received grants of for the Levy Status Foundation from the Levy Status Foundation. Both these grants were earmarked for regional conference on HIV or AIDS. International Red Cross or Red Crescent. Non-political, non-functional, official international humanitarian organization, organization devoted to service of mankind in war and peace, founded by Henry Dunant, International Committee of Red Cross, came into existence in 1864, League of Red Cross establishment in 1990, which is headquarters in Geneva, work of Red Crescent, help and relief during natural disasters, service to armed forces, service to war veterans, program on first aid and nursing, programs on health education, providing maternity and child welfare services. Red Crescent Society of Malaysia, the Malaysian Red Crescent Society that is MRCS has its beginnings in 1948 as branches of British Red Cross Society in Sabah and Sarawak. In 1950, the British Red Cross Society further established branches in the other parts of Malaysia starting in Penang in 1950 and later in other states. Community service program and medical treatment, first aid training and ambulance services, disaster management, maintenance of blood banks and restoring family. International health agencies for dental care like American Dental Association, American Dental Hygienist Association, National Dental Association, National Institute of Dental Research, Federation Dentire International, Federation Dentire International that is FDI which is an international dental health agency established in 1900 at Paris headquarters in London. The aim is to advance in the science and art of dentistry and status of dental profession in interest of improved oral health for all people. Achievements like CPITN with WHO, Anti-AIDS Initiative and IDP, Oral Health Development, International Dental Journal, four scientific commissions, CORE, that is Commission on Health Research Epidemiology, CDEP, Commission on Dental Education and Practice, CDP, Commission on Dental Products, CDFDS, Commission on Defense Forces and Dental Services. Coming to voluntary health agencies. 
A voluntary health agency may be defined as an organization that is administered by an autonomous board which holds the meeting, collects funds for support chiefly from private sources and expense money. Whether with or without paid workers in conducting program directed primarily to furthering the public health by providing health services or health education or by advancing research or legislation for health or by combination of these activities. The voluntary health agencies have been compared to motor trucks which can penetrate the bay the byways. The official agencies are compared to railway trunk lines which must run on tracks established by law. That means the voluntary agencies will go to all the areas like the rural areas where uh, the official agencies can't go. Coming to the functions of voluntary agencies, supplementing the work of government agencies, then pioneering, education, demonstration, guiding the work of government agencies, advancing health legislations. Supplementing the work of government agencies, government agencies cannot provide complete service, financial or statutory restrictions. So voluntary health agencies strengthen the work of government agencies by contributing funds, not only in funds, in also delivering uh, medical facilities to the people who are uh, staying very far or which is not accessible easily for the officials. Then pioneering, the voluntary health agencies are in position to explore ways and means of doing new things. Education, the government agencies cannot cope with the problem unless it is supplemented by voluntary effort on the part of people. Demonstration, by putting up demonstrations and experimental projects, the voluntary health agencies have advanced the cause of public health. Guarding the work of governmental agencies. By setting a good example, the voluntary health agencies can always guide and criticize the work of government agencies. Advancing health legislation. The voluntary agencies can also mobilize public opinion and advance legislation on health matters for benefit of whole community. Voluntary health agencies in Malaysia. The first is Amnesty International, which is aimed to protect human rights, expose any violation and mobilize people to put pressure on governments and others to stop these violations. Befrienders. These are hotline service providing emotional support for depressed or suicidal callers. Then the third is All Women's Action Society. An independent organization committed to provide the lives of women in Malaysia by advocating and securing women's, uh, sorry, women's rights, pushing for gender equality, enhancing the capacity for social transformation and supporting women in crisis. Cancer Link Foundation. The Cancer Link Foundation provides emotional practical and informational support through focused support care programs and services. Next is Mercy Malaysia. The Malaysian Medical Relief Society or Mercy Malaysia is an organization ready to lend its support in times of international crisis, natural disasters and provides health care, water, sanitation, hygiene and other programs. Sohakam, Human Rights Commission of Malaysia. The Human Rights Commission of Malaysia is an status national human rights institution formed to promote active involvement among the various communities and societal actors in promotion and protection of human rights in the country. So these are some of the voluntary health agencies which are helping in uh, people of Malaysia. I know this topic is quite boring and many agencies are there. It will be difficult for you to remember. 
but still you can remember because most of the functional roles are common between the agencies uh, and few agencies like WHO, UNICEF, uh, FAO, ILO, these are very important. So you have to remember this and uh, this chapter carries more marks. We may ask in MCQs, also in two marks question and also in the auspice and auspices. So um, don't neglect this chapter. If you have any doubts, please contact me. Thank you.